Okay, we are live now. Let's just share the screen and uh, get started. Okay, here we are. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, apologies for that short delay. Um, yeah, even the camera is still not that good, but that's okay. We can continue. Let's start with the prayer. Yogena chittasya padena vajam malam sharirasya cha Vaidyakena Yopakarot Tam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranjali Ranatosmi Excellent. Welcome back. Sorry for that seven minute delay once again. It happens. Uh, so we will continue our discussion of the Samadhi Padas. As of last week, we covered up to verse 7. So today's plan is to cover verses 8 to 11. So let's have a quick recap. And please pay good attention because these are fundamentals upon which we are going to build our meditation practices. So let's do a quick recap before we get started. So we are in the Samadhi Pada and we are on the topic three because we started with the statement of intent, which was Sutra 1, Atha Yoga Anushasanam. And then we saw probably the best definition of yoga as Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha on a superficial level. It sounds, it is referring only to the first half of the yoga definition. But if you remember, we had a long discussion, lengthy discussion, taking one full week to talk about the scope of that Chitta Vritti Nirodha. It starts with the control, but finally in end up with the union. That's the beauty of this definition. So probably this would be the best definition of yoga given a same definition is given in the Bhagavad Gita also in the sixth chapter. So we spend a lot of time on that. And we understood yoga as the mastery of the modifications of the mind. Mastery over the modifications of the mind. And if that mastery happens, you will establish or you will understand who you are really. That was the third sutra. And the fourth sutra tells, if you don't have the mastery, there is a very good chance that you get identified with your mental modifications and carried away. Tada drishtuhu sarupe avasthanam and vritti sarupya mitanatana. And then we started, if our goal is to control or mastery or gain mastery over the mental activities, or the mental modifications, what exactly is the scope of that mastery? So there is a dicing and slicing we wanted to understand. What is the dicing and slicing used by Patanjali to classify the different categories of mental modifications? So we, saw, I mean, we found that on a high level, you can classify this into two, klishta or aklishta. That modifications which leads you to the goal of your life that modifications which takes you to the highest possibilities of life, that modifications which helps you in the path of yoga and meditation, they are known as aklishtavrti. On the other hand, the, there are vrtis, there are uh, modifications which takes you away from the path of yoga, which can makes you suffering, which can create bondage in you, and they are called klishtavrti. That's one way of dicing and slicing. And then the second way of dicing and slicing is there are five categories of these mental modifications. 
mind you on verse 1 we had seen another way of mod means the effect or the end results of the mind like chipta vikshipta ekagra mutha and nirodha so these are mental states and there is another dicing and slicing meaning that vrittis or that modifications which takes me to this chipta state is known as chipta vritti that modifications which takes me to a dull state is known as mudha vritti and that modifications of the mind which takes me to a distracted state is known as vikshipta vritti and that modifications which takes me to the concentrated mode is known as ekagra vritti so that's another dicing and slicing so we need to understand there are three way of grouping these vrittis and the last way is what we have been seeing and we saw the first grouping was pramana so we saw that there are five way of group the vrittis another dicing and slicing because understanding this dicing and slicing will help me to approach and gain mastery of this life if you remember we talked about this last week how the many to many relationship works so pramana vritti viparyaya vritti vikalpa vritti nidra vritti and smrdaya vritti this is another category so these are the this is the topic we have been talking earlier and out of that we saw what is pramana let's move to the next slide so the pramana these are the five men types of mental modifications we have been seeing pramana correct perception viparyaya false perception vikalpa imaginations or illusionary thoughts nidra sleep smriti memories this is what we have been seeing and out of that we saw what is pramana already if you remember what is pramana pramana means that type of mental modifications that types of modifications of the mind which gives me the correct knowledge about an object or a thing or a concept so pramana means prama means knowledge karanam means instrument so that instrument which gives me the right knowledge is known as pramana so if you remember there were three pramanas identified in the yoga school what are they anybody remembering what are the three pramanas we talked pratyaksha direct perception anumana whatever you see right what is the next one anybody somebody said anumana exactly that is correct inference all the scientific discoveries comes through the inference so inference means you are connecting the dots and we saw a lot of example last week and then there is a third category because sometimes what happens the truth is beyond perception and logic in such cases we rely on the third pramana which is called agama agama means that which takes you to the truth and figure it literally it means vedas in the ancient times at the time of yoga sutra it means vedas on the modern times we can call it as scriptures all the valid scriptures because the subject matter of the scriptures are not subject to direct perception sometimes and the inference initial stages so for example the law of karma can i prove it through inference and uh, direct perception not possible if somebody believes in heaven that's not subject to perception and inference so there are certain information or the correct knowledge which is not possible to get through direct perception and inference that's where we use the scripture as a pramana or the vedanta as a pramana or the yoga as a pramana so this is what it is but patanjali comes forth and wants immediately what is the right way of using it try to align these three as much as possible remember the the statement made by vivekananda you don't want to go to a blind belief 
you want to make sure that yeah there are certain beliefs we had this extensive discussion something may not be aligned with the logic beyond logic but it cannot be against the logic so that alignment is important so as much as possible try to align the pratyaksha anumana and agama and if three of the alignments if three the alignment of the three is not possible try to align at least two then only take it don't blindly believe but the focus of this sutra is sometimes certain mental activities will happen and that mental activities can take me to the right knowledge and one more point we discussed last week was can we say that always this right knowledge is going to take me to uh, ekagra vritti or nirodhavritti we cannot say that sometimes you may see a cobra real cobra in front of you and the mental modification is going to give me the correct knowledge but what would be the state of my mind it could be chipta so that it doesn't mean that always the right knowledge is going to lead me to the actual final desti- destination but understand that right means the modification can give me the right knowledge so please keep that in mind so recapping there are five vritti five categories of vrittis and the first category is known as pramana and the pramana is going to give you the correct knowledge so let's go to the second category of vritti so sutra 8 is going to talk about the second category of vritti and this vritti is known as viparyaya so if you have any question in what i am talking please raise it immediately because this is an important topic and then detailed doubts we can always answer at the end so the second sutra is viparyaya which is known as the mental modifications whatever is the cause that I means sometimes there could be modifications or ripples in the mind which can gives me incorrect knowledge that is known as viparyaya so let's listen to the sutra and try to understand it viparyayo mithyaknanam atadrupa pratishtham beautiful words again viparyayo mithyaknanam atadrupa pratishtham this is what the sutra tells viparyayo mithyaknanam atadrupa pratishtham so viparyaya you can see viparita viparyaya that which takes me around or that which takes me away that is the literal meaning of the word viparyaya paryaya means takes me viparyaya means in the opposite direction or around that is what it means so it won't take me to the direct knowledge so viparyaya what exactly it is mithya jnana mithya jnana means not the correct knowledge so viparyaya gives me not the correct knowledge and how it is given pratishtam means based on atad rupa atad rupa means tat rupa means i see something as it is atad rupa means i see something externally but i mistake as something else for example if i see a snake rope i can mistake it as a snake that means atad rupa if i see the snake as snake it is tat rupa but if i don't see the snake as a snake but as a rope it is atat rupa so the sutra tells viparyaya is not correct knowledge and this is based upon the false understanding of something you misunderstand something the classic example given in all the vedanta yoga scripture is snake and rope in a dark alley when you see a rope there is an easy chance for you to mistake it as a sorry rope is mistaken as a snake so it is mithya jnanam incorrect knowledge why because if it was correct knowledge you would have understood the rope as rope so it is mithya jnanam and atat rupa pratishtam you saw a form right it is not that there is nothing outside yet yeah, there is something but you you have mistaken it as something other than itself misapprehension of the truth that's it what it is so you saw something 
and instead of saw, seeing it correctly you miss means you understood it as something different when the vrittis happens in this direction that categories of vrittis is known as viparyaya vritti viparyaya vritti please understand these technical terms these are wonderful so let's understand little bit more detail right so this is the classic example viparyaya you see a rope on one side right here you see a rope but uh, if it is correct perception if it is pramana means you see it as a rope but if the rope is seen as a snake that means it is viparyaya so perceiving something other than what it is is known as viparyaya that's it very simple but the scope of this is much bigger than what you think you think that this is a snake and rope example every vedanta class or yoga class you hear it but extend this to your life your spouse didn't smile at you you may think it has something else every situation in life most probably it is taken as something else this is a big problem so, but here we are not trying to address the problem or anything like that so please understand the purpose the purpose is the sense organs when it captures this rope it creates a set of vrittis because mind you what is the yoga perception model is you are not seeing an object directly but you are seeing only the vrittis so if that vrittis are correct based upon the real object then i am seeing it as it is but if the vrittis are viparyaya even though the object remains the same let's say that a and b are seeing the rope for a the same rope they both saw for a it the vrittis appeared as a rope for b the vrittis appeared as a snake so for, but for b that snake is real and for a the rope is real mind you both a and b are saying the same thing so for anybody in their life what they see is not the actual object but the vrittis so if the vrittis are not correct it is going to create problem and that is why we are giving a lot of emphasis and focus on these vrittis we want to make sure that we have control over the vrittis and this is a big topic now what exactly determines whether the vrittis are correct there could be so many reasons a it could be due to the fact that there won't be enough light so the perception was not completely correct i got an input an imprint a pratyaya is represented in the mind but my mental faculties you, because the right knowledge happens here due to the in, means the perception and inference and the inference gave me a wrong interpretation that could be the reason why the inference gave me a wrong interpretation i always had fear of snakes think like this is a big topic we are going to see this later in the in the yoga sutra but just a glimpse so what patanjali and vyasa is trying to say is that this error can happen in any of these statement, statements it could be in the pratyaksha or it because remember what gives me right knowledge is the pramana and the pramana can happen with pratyaksha anumana and agama so for example if my eyes are not capturing correctly or if there is no proper image the error could be there sometimes what happens even though the eyes capture correctly because of my past samskaras if my anumana is put an error 
immediately that pramana vritti becomes a viparya vritti and sometimes what happens your perception and inference everything is correct but you blindly believe on these agamas or scriptures and that can also give me wrong knowledge a good example some people used to practice the caste systems so when somebody see remember that best example shankara was saying gacha gacha perception was correct anumana was correct but wrong interpretation of the agama it created false meaning so this vipar means the a pramana can slip into viparyaya very easily if any of these steps goes wrong and there could be legitimate reason for that but the fact is that understand that avritti can become a pramana or a viparyaya and if the vrittis are viparyaya no matter what the real reality is for you that would be the truth and that is a problem and this is a good old problem and no vedanta class will end up with this example so you know this this is the viparyaya so viparyaya is mithya jnanam so with mithya jnanam means what the correct knowledge the satya jnanam here is the roop the truth true knowledge is the roop mithya jnanam means what incorrect knowledge superimposed knowledge or relatively true knowledge so mithya jnanam here is the snake is mistaken as a rope sorry the rope is mistaken as a snake and what is that atat roopa pratishtam it is not based on the actual rule the roopa the form it is a form that was superimposed crystal clear you cannot define something so precisely more than this this is the beauty viparyayo mithya jnanam atat roopa pratishtam not over let's do a little bit more deep dive into this so this is what it is literally viparyaya means it goes around or goes away from the original paryaya means goes vi, vi means around or away so if it was right knowledge you would see the rope as rope viparyaya means you would go around the rope and find a snake in that that that's the literal meaning right and the definition is defined something as you define you see something to be what it is not think about that example you see the rope as snake and in reality the rope is not the snake so you see the rope as something what it is not which is the snake so that is the rule and then what is that the mental modifications the vrittis produced by the viparyaya right is different from the vrittis produced by the pramana if it was pramana vritti the mental modification would have created a rope whereas when it goes to viparyaya the vrittis would be different even for even though the object is the same if there is an error in judgment the vrittis would be different and for me that vrittis is the truth so and this error is due to the incorrect knowledge and how the viparyaya can be removed by gaining the actual knowledge so that is these are some of the important facts of viparyaya couple of more points so as i said earlier right so this is the shankaracharya vyasa commentary of the yoga sutra so they go to lot of logical analysis of this topic they say the implication here is that the observation can be faulty when the mind lacks steady focus think through that when i am disturbed the possibility of misinterpretation a pramana becomes viparyaya is very high right and this misrepresentation is ground it means grounded in problems that occur in the act of perception or process of inference i already explained that if there is not enough life light 
the perception may not be correct. Or if I had always fear on, of snakes, inference can go wrong. So in the perception, inference or agama, any of these pramanas creates an error, pramana becomes viparya. Right? So that, as we said, the, it, it could be because of the fact that the information relayed by the senses is incomplete. Right? Or if the logic is faulty and irrelevant information is added, or the memory does not contain facts related to inference. For example, if I had never seen an ob means uh, something like a snake or a fire, I don't get the fact that it is dangerous. So there could be multiple reasons why the pramana goes to viparya, and also it can happen at any step. So the consequence of this misrepresentation the actual facts will not be represented in your mem memory properly. And also what, what you will store in your memory. Viparya. If my friend didn't smile at me, what will be in my mind? He had a problem, family problem. That is the fact. But what, what, I, what is the takeaway for me? He ignored me. That's what the take, take home message. So this is the problem of Viparya. So the seekers are always mindful and be aware of this misinterpretation. Don't take everything exactly as right. Some, sometimes you may feel that I means everything is falling around. Take a step back. You think that everything is falling around or you think that the situation is as bad as you think because that is the vritti is telling me. So you are asked always to revalidate your vrittis. I told you, right, example, right? The other day. Some people are there. If they were asked to just take a um, ECG, I'm not joking. Somebody was asked to take a uh, like a test, a stress test or an ECG. This lady already confirmed that she had heart, heart issues and started crying and creating a big scene. So we invite trouble always because our vrittis tells us because for this particular person the vrittis told her that you have heart disease. So where is the error? The error is in the vritti. So what we were advised to do is always observe this misperception or misrepresentation of vrittis. It can happen in any step of your knowledge seeking and observe the relationship with the other people because this is where it happens a lot. Even in the Yoga Sutra commentary, it is asked in the uh, Viparya part because they, he was telling like, this is where people lose the relationship. And 90% of the relationship issues is due to this misunderstanding. This is Viparya. Any comments or any quick questions? Otherwise we will come back later. Uh, anything that is not understood? Yeah, Rajesh. Ah, uh, Rajesh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three, three. Yeah, yeah. Start with Rohitji. <laughs> okay, sure. I mean, sometimes what is considered pramana, uh. with passage of time, can become a vipraya. Like yeah. earth is flat. It, yeah. it was, it, it was, it, it was viparya originally, but I took it as pramana. But over a period of time, I got more information. For example, once upon a time, earth was considered as flat based upon the facts available at that point of time. But over a period of time, we understand that, yeah, that was not correct. So absolutely, it can change. The truth never changes, but what I took as pramana could be really viparyaya. That is what happens and it is possible. So that is why he was telling at that point of time, as much as possible, align those three because then the probability is less. 
Pratika, you had one, and uh, Bala, you had one, right? So please. Yeah, uh, sorry, quick question. Like, see, sometimes, I mean, we've been asked to look at the goodness in others, right? So like, sometimes whatever we want to see is like the goodness from other people. Like, so that way, that is the mental impressions we create. So if that is the case, if we, if we align ourselves to see the goodness, uh, even though if it may not be that good, is it still Viparyaya? Like, I mean, but I'm getting a good vibes here. Like, I'm, I want to do that. Uh, so is it a good thing or a bad thing? Like, I mean, can I assume that it is superior? It is not always bad, right? So uh, let me ask you, right? So do you want to be running away from the truth? Yes. You wanted to keep your mind positive and you wanted to un make sure that everything is good. But when you, when you have a snake uh, sitting next to you, if you just have that uh, positive feeling, you're only thinking that the snake won't bite me, that won't help me. So Nobody is as doing is to run away from the reality. You wanted to optimistically, means know the fact and optimistically approach it. And uh, interestingly, we are going to see this in the Yoga Sutra itself. We are going to see uh, how to deal with such situation. And uh, in the Bhagavad Gita also, it is coming, definitely. But uh, I wouldn't be blind to the truth because uh, I can say that this is good, that is good. These are good for the motivational speaking and uh, uh, things like that. We don't want to run away from the truth. Right. Okay. Bala, you had. Yeah. My question is that um, misperception, right? Like, uh, first of all, I don't know whether I will realize it or not. How yeah. do we actually even realize that? Is it a misperception? <laughs> that's a good not? question. Yeah, that's a good one, right? So the, 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 the point is, yes, try to align. Means, see, the thing is that most of the people, why this is brought to our attention is you're absolutely right. Sometimes you don't, you, you honestly believe that that is my true perception and you cannot do anything on that. But what potentially is warning us is some people, they don't pay any attention. They think what they feel is the right thing always. But here a word of caution is put in front of you, right? You wanted to be mindful. You wanted to understand that sometimes, like when you feel so much trust, you just wanted to just step back for a second and see, is it really true? Okay. And one good example is because this is this itself can save the life. Most of the people don't even realize that. They just go with their feeling. And what is the result? They make their life a hell. Some people every day find, they, they creatively find one reason to get depressed every day. So that, that means that, you know, is that something called like, you know, openness, right? Like be open for things, right? Something I would like say that. be mindful, mindful, be aware, be mindful. Sometimes when you see a snake, just make sure that it is snake. What is wrong in that? Before jumping and running. Of yeah. course, you need to be careful. Yeah. So it's don't be ignorant that the snake won't bite me. But it's definitely. Step back is the right way to do yeah. it. Right? Yeah, it's step back. back and and reassess the situation because or ask somebody else sometimes i may feel that the whole world is coming to coming down and i i have no way i may rethink and reevaluate every time it happens at that time go to a good friend who is not affected by that situation he may have a different perspective but what see the whole focus of this sutra is just telling us that what do you feel and experience is always the vritti. And there is a high probability that the pramana can go as viparyaya. Thank Look you. at the psychology of these verses. And this is, this is where we are getting really stunned. This is getting into the human mind. This is really our day to day or every, every moment of our life, you know, we go through this, right? So yeah. identifying yeah. that becomes really critical, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you, Radhi. We can have more discussion at the end, but anything on the verse. Excellent. So let's go. Let's go to the next type of vritti. So the first categories of vritti was pramana. Pramana means that type of modifications which gives me the correct knowledge. Second type of modification is that type of modification which gives me wrong in knowledge. You are seeing something. You are seeing A, but you are seeing it as A dash or B. That is Viparyaya. 
Now there is a third category. How does all the discoveries happen? How does all the creativity happen? How does the art come out? All the wonderful things in the world. Creativity. On the positive side. On the other side, who sits and think about something that never happening and get depressed? Another category of vritti is their imagination. Imagination means that modifications of the mind, which is not by seeing any external object. It is created completely from your mind. So let's try to understand that. Shabda Jnana Nupati Vastu Shunyo Vikalpaha Beautiful. Shabda Jnana Anupati Vastu Shunyo Vikalpaha So the imagination is known as Vikalpa. Kalpa means imagination. Vikalpa means Visheshena Kalpaha. So it carries two meanings. One is it can be completely wrong. And sometimes it can be completely special and beautiful. So imagination. Kalpa, you are imagining. And what is the category? Shabda Jnana Nupadi. It consists of the knowledge from the usage of words or thoughts. That's it. Shabda here has a larger dimension. So somebody can tell me their imagination or I can imagine my thoughts. You, the key difference between Viparya and uh, Vikalpa is Viparya, you see something externally and you create a knowledge out of it. Vikalpa means you're not seeing anything. Look at Vyasa. How beautifully he has written the Mahabharata. Look at these poetries. My God, look at Keats. Means how does they represent certain ideas? Look at Kalidasa. How he describe all these places. Oh my God, you you'd see the beauty. Word painting. And sometimes these. Poets never visited that places. As a child, I used to read these phantom comics. I don't know, some of you might have read that. Uh, in our childhood, it was there. Lee Falk, who wrote these comics, never visited Africa. Can you imagine that? But still, his creativity was so fantastic. And look at the creativity of the, I mean, this Avatar movie and all such movies. It comes from their imagination. Even I was talking about the, the Ben-Hur the other day, right? How the Christ scene was shot. It comes from the head of a director. Yes, Vikalpa. So don't think Vikalpa is completely negative connotation. So many people think that it is negative. It can be positive also. These modern movies, I was watching the interview of a famous director the other day. Um, he was telling, everything is in their mind. So when you shoot a big scene, have you ever thought what the director is seeing in front? In the olden days, when you shoot the movie, you see the scene in front of you. But right now, what they see is only a green screen in front of them. So they, can, they have to imagine, okay, there will be a moon here, there will be some water here, there will be a fire there, and they need to shoot. It's all vikalpa. It comes from them. So imaginations are vrittis that come from the inner metaphor, words, or expressions without corresponding to the physical reality. 
That is the exact definition of fecal form. Let's try to understand this. So <laughs> this is the classic example given in our scriptures. There is nothing prevent you from imagining a new animal. And you can communicate that well, right? I can say that it has the body of a tiger and the head of a rabbit. Yes, when I communicate that, that comes to your mind. Your mind can create images without any perceptible reality. All the discoveries, great discoveries in the world comes through this thing. And when the mental modification happens like this, that type of modifications or vrittis are known as vikalpa. And the human beings, the speciality of the human beings are happen because of this, this imagination. I always think that this is what made the human beings a human being. Those who are interested, you can read the book, Sapiens. I don't know anybody read that. It's a brief history of the human beings. So in this book, in that book, the author calls out this pretty much. In the scheme of evolution, what made the sapiens the sapiens is up until like 200, 300, I mean 200,000 years back, we were pretty much lower in the ladder of evolution. The whole dominance over the world was determined by the muscle power. It was impossible for you to fight with an elephant or a lion or a tiger because the muscle power is very much higher. But over a period of time, human beings started imagining. And from there, they started creating new, new, new things. And that's what made us what we are. So this vikalpa is going to help us to think about the possibility of a new scenario or a product. Imagine how the, 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 the concept of Uber came up. Right? Somebody thought about a possibility. So this possibility comes from imagination. You can imagine you're enjoying an object. And sometimes that imagination itself can create happiness in you. And then you can imagine so many things. The possibilities are infinite. And when you think about something without the actuality, that is vikalpa. And there is a positive spin and a negative spin for this imagination. Positively, these imaginations can make us creative, leading to new possibilities in life. Negatively, these imaginations and fantasy can make us live in a future world, a suffering world created by me and ignore the presence and also creates a lot of issues. So it paradoxically represents right a meaningful expression that is not the actual reality and sometimes it would be beneficial and sometimes it could be um, wrong. And these imaginations can depend upon even pramana and viparyaya also. Because I can imagine based upon something I have perceived. I can also imagine something, create something new from the viparyaya also. So please don't think that five minutes pramana thoughts will come, five minutes viparyaya thoughts will come. See, it's like one wave will create another ripple that ripple create another three ripples. That is how the mind works. So let's say that at any given point of time, 1500 ripples are there. Out of that, a few will be pramana, a few will be viparya, a few will be vikalpa. How it, it just keeps on oscillating. This is how the mind works. And understand that this is the psychology of yoga. This is the psychology of yoga. And please, 
if somebody else calls freud as the father of modern psychology at this time i feel bad freudian theory didn't even come near this and modern days everybody accept this people accept this but still people are being called called I mean we call freud as the father of the psychology this is very important so this is the scope of imaginations let's go to the next category of vritti it is sleep this can be confusing let's try to understand this so let's listen to the sutra first abhav प्रत्ययालंबना वृत्तिर निद्रा अभाव प्रत्यय आलंबन वृत्ति निद्रा दिस इज हाउ इफ यू ब्रेक इट डाउन अभाव मीनिंग एब्सेंस वृत्ति मींस दैट मॉडिफिकेशंस ऑफ द माइंड व्हिच इज बेस्ड अपॉन एब्सेंस प्रत्ययालंबन एब्सेंस ऑफ एनी कंटेंट is sleep so the modification of the mind based on the fact that it's a special category of vritti in that vritti there is no oscillation there is no change immediately you may ask then what is the difference between chitta vritti nirodha and sleep so we'll, we have to want to see that in the chitta vritti nirodha also there is no oscillations or modifications and in sleep also there is no oscillations and modifications and here patanjali is defining sleep as when the vrittis are controlled and there is no modifications apava there is no external perception there is no object to be focused at and there is no modification and that is vritti is known as nidra so the sleep deep sleep first of all please understand that this is not a dream sleep but this is a deep sleep it is sushupti uh, in the avastha trayam of the vedanta we heard about three states right jagrat swapna sushupti so this is not a swapna state this is a deep sleep state you are not aware of anything because there is no vrittis if you want to understand anything there has to be some vritti you are absorbed in something just like samadhi just like chitta vritti nirodha nothing is there and that type of vrittis which is leading to the state is known as sleep so let's try to understand a little bit okay so sleep is a state where the mind rests and absor- absorbed in the absence of any thoughts it's an absorption and it is absorbed in the absence of any modification so sleep is the absence of other modification meaning in the sleep state there is no pramana there is no viparyaya no vikalpa and there is no memory which is another category which we are going to see nothing is there so this is not a dream state but this is a sleep state the dream state means yes some vrittis are happening that is not from an external object but from the memory it is happening so this is not referring to a dream state this is referring to deep sleep state so this particular topic there are some difference of opinion first you need to understand because if you take pramana you can say that okay a set of vrittis are happening viparya means another set of vrittis are happening vikalpa means another set of vrittis are happening but sleep there is no vrittis are happening so why the dream the sleep is considered as a type of vritti a lot of questions are there but in the yoga psychology right it is said that the memory is the product of samskaras so the logic used here is twofold let's try to understand one by one the first thing is after a deep sleep you are aware of the fact that i had a good sleep 
that means you have the memory of that state so if there if you had the memory of a particular state patanjali tells that right so uh, that is caused by a samskara and that is why it means it is considered as a state but let me give you a little bit more clear explanation because still you may think that samadhi and the deep sleep because there also the chitta vrittis are controlled that this is a more technical explanation yes you are 100% right that there is a difference between samadhi and uh, deep sleep both state has a kind of chitta vritti nirodha the chitta vrittis are almost suspended no modification but there is a difference in sleep what happens the vrittis that dominates the mind is tamasik vritti so that's why we say even for a self realized master right we already saw that the chittam hi triguna the my content of the mind can be three type and per the yoga model when somebody sleeps what happens a tamasik vritti which forces you to rest will cover the whole mind and that vritti is like a dark colored mirror whereas in samadhi what happens the vritti that dominates see the water is still remember look imagine this like a lake in the first case the water is still in the last case the water is still but in the case of a sleep on the top of the water the layer that covers the water is a dark layer so if you look into that dark layer imagine look at that mirror here so when the tamasik vritti prevails the chitta that is the time you sleep it is like putting a black curtain on your mind the consciousness is active but it is seeing only darkness that is why it slept whereas in the case of pure samadhi what happens the chitta vrittis are means it is purely uh, controlled but it's like a clean mirror or it's like a clean water so you can see yourself inside so this is a larger technical discussion but i think our class is capable of understanding this you won't see this in the com- conventional modern commentaries but if you go to shankaracharya and vyasas vyasa bhashya and shankara's vivarana this much details is given they had discussed this objection shankaracharya you know that right he always raise an objection he raises what is the difference between sleep and samadhi in both the cases the mental activities are suspended and if that is he tells immediately the chitta vritti nirodha of the samadhi is like a um, clean mirror whereas the chitta vritti nirodha of the sleep is due to a tamasik overlap layer overlap and that is why you don't see anything and that is why you say like a krishna or a jesus or a, even an avatar will have a little bit of tamas in them because otherwise you cannot sleep so this is important so what when we say that you have to remove the tamas it means that the tamas and rajas always should be under the control of sattva that's all it means so this is a very important topic and also you need to understand that the purusha is always active even in your deep sleep the purusha is active but in the case of a sleep state what happens the vritti that dominates the chitta is dark there is nothing for purusha to see nothing to eliminate whereas when you do the actual chitta vritti nirodha what happens it's like a clean mirror the purusha will get a beautiful reflection of itself like and let's talk one more point here i know that this is too much but we are going to see this is the, this is the later part this is what we are going to explore a lot but imagine what would be the state of a normal person right i'm looking at a mirror like it's like a lake hundreds of vrittis are coming and from one vritti it goes to the other 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 millions of vrittis are happening in the mind this is what the state of a normal person and 
മെജോറിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് വൃത്തിസ് വുഡ് ബി വിപര്യയ എ ഫ്യൂ ഓഫ് ദം വുഡ് ബി പ്രമാണ ആൻഡ് എ ഫ്യൂ ഓഫ് ദം വുഡ് ബി വിക്കൽപ്പ ആൻഡ് എ ഫ്യൂ ഓഫ് ദം വുഡ് ബി സ്മൃതയ ബട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് ഓൾവേസ് and that is why i get identified with those vrutis and carried away from day after night after day after night and such a person when he goes to the bed what is going to happen the turbulence of the mind will slowly 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 comes down and a one vruti will dominate the lake of the mind which is kind of a dark curtain and that is the time you feel sleep this is the logical model presented by the yoga uh darshana about the sleep and the samadhi so this is a very important topic uh let's let's see what else is left so two words used here one is called pratyaya the other one is called alambana so pratyaya means that is a mental imprint whenever you see something what happens an impression will be created in your mind just like when you walk on the shore of a of a beach what happens your foot or your hand will have a print there so that is what is forms as the samskara or the memory so the sleep there is no pratyaya and alambana means typically the mind will depend upon these mental imprints for creating a judgment a pramana or a viparyaya or a vikalpa or smriti smriti always comes from this and everywhere this pratyaya is used so pratyaya alambana usually is required for all the other type of vrutis but in the case of sleep there is no pratyaya alambana it's just a blanket covering of that one vruti which is the sleep vruti that's it so this alambana we are going to see a lot especially from verse 123 to 139 sorry i'm it's 133 133 to 139 for example if you use the image of lord shiva as a means for your meditation that is an alambana so here what we are trying to say is there is no alambana apava pratyaya alambana vrutti nidra so that's pretty much it i think we can stop here we are at the top of the hour um we will do the means we will cover the memory next week one more vrutti is there from there we can purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate പൂർണ്ണ പൂർണമാദായ പൂർണമേവശിഷ്യത്തെ ഓന്തി ശാന്തി ശാന്തി Okay let me stop the